In this video, we're going to begin sketching our painting and also examine Cezanne's painting and learn to understand what the value structure is underneath the colors. Value structure is very important um, in any painting. The value structure is a painting's bones. And if that's not right, the painting will not be right. So whether you're painting your own images or you are copying and learning from another's image, you need to understand the value structure. Now the digital world has given us many easy ways to discern the value structure of an image or painting, and painter is no exception. In order to discern the underlying value structure of this painting, I use a simple tool. Go up to Window, and down to Auto Painting Panels, and over to Under Painting. This allows us to desaturate this painting completely. And now we see that it's divided into four, perhaps five, major values. We have a dark gray, medium gray, and a lighter gray with some white. Now it's extremely important to dissect any painting or any image that you're about to paint into a simple value structure because upon that will hang all of the colors. If that value structure is not correct, you will not be happy with your painting. And if we do not get the value or the light and dark structures of the colors correct, our painting will not look anything like Cezanne's. As we begin dissecting the values of this painting, you're also going to learn a few more tips about your brushes. So I've added a second layer over the image and I've chosen luscious oil. And this brush requires that you open up the blending panel. And that's window, brush control panels, and then over here to blending, right there. Just click on enhanced layer blending and that will ensure that you won't get any ghosting of white around your brush strokes. So now I want to sample just this basic gray. So let's hit the Alter Option key so that we get a little eyedropper tool, sample it, and we get basically a dark gray. And since this is an oil brush, we're going to get an idea of what this painting will look like painted in oils. Now I'm just going to be do this very roughly because again, I just want to show the basic value, basic values in this image. In fact, you could make every section into a geographic, into a geometric um, shape without even going around the oranges or anything like that. Make this a little darker if you want. Okay, just to get an idea. Then I'm going to sample these and I'm going to put that right in there. And I'm going to sample this lighter gray, let's say right about here. And the picture will make a little lighter because this is going to be our focal point. And we have a few light areas here. But again, we have one, two, three, four. And maybe we could add a little white in here. just to get an idea. So this painting really does have a very basic value structure. If we turn this off, you can see there we go. Okay. All right, now I'm going to 
turn this back on, but I'm going to add another layer between this one and this one. And I'm going to go over to my paint bucket and fill that just like this with white so that when I turn off my image, I don't see a transparent layer. So this is basically what we, what we should aim for when we're painting in color, a dark area, medium gray, light gray, and the lightest area really should be the picture because this is our focal point. So let's save this, we'll call it value study, file, save as, still life with picture, I'm gonna save this as value study. Okay, and let's see, and save it to desktop, and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. Press okay. Okay, we want excellent, or we save your files as excellent. Now, we can actually make this little image much smaller so that we can hit Command or Control and minus. There we go. So that we can keep it up in a corner. You can put it here, you can put it here, whatever feels comfortable for you so that we can constantly refer to it. No matter what colors we're gonna be putting down on our painting, we have to make sure that the value map looks like this. And the great thing is, is that when you make a painting, you can instantly turn it into a black and white image and see if the values are matching up or not. I've opened up my color image of Cezanne's painting again, and I have the underpainting panel open and I'm going to desaturate it once again. And then I'm going to grab my very first brush here in the post-impressionist um, category, charcoal draw, make sure I have black, and I'm going to add a new layer, and I'm just going to sketch along very expressively, sketch along his lines here. Now make sure, now here I've selected a canvas texture right there, okay? Um, but you can go back to your simulated wood grain and you can also make sure that you go up to brush tracking right there. And make sure your brush just slides along easily. Okay, that's much better. If you want more grain, you can increase this slider right there. And let me show you what this looks like. So again, if I hide the canvas layer by pressing on the eye, I'm gonna get a transparent layer because we're actually working on a transparent layer. So click on the canvas layer and click on new layer. And now you've got a new layer sandwiched in between. Click on the paint bucket and white and just press like that and you've, you've actually filled this layer with white. Now it doesn't matter whether we turn this on or off, we can't see it. And then go back, make sure this is selected in blue, go back to the layer that you're sketching on. Now let's turn this off and turn this back on so we can see where we are. Press B for brush, make sure you continue to do that. Go back to black. You can make your brush smaller or larger. And again, this is very pressure sensitive. If you want to zoom in, you can hit Command or Control Plus. So you can actually get in there and see what you're doing. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, if you want to check, you turn on 
the white canvas and you can see that we have our sketches beginning. Turn this off and we go back to our image. Now I finished my sketch. Let's see what that looks like. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now we have to enlarge this image because this image is very small. So we go up to Canvas, Resize, and rather than change the inches, I am just going to change this to 250 ppi, like this. And that will automatically enlarge it. There we go. So that if I want to get in there up close and paint, I can. And we finished our sketch onto the painting.